All right. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of The Block. I'm your host, Kyle Johnston. No rest for the wicked. You can find my work on Twitter, at KJ underscore The Block. Find my work on my blog site, KyleJohnstonTheBlock.wordpress.com. The Bills fans are in sorrow once again. Once again, they've been denied, denied, knocking off the Patriots off the pedestal, denied ruin, ruining the perfect season. I didn't get any uh, wagers in on the Monday Nighter, actually, I was on the uh, college hard court. It was a good night of action last night. What? I think I gave six, seven picks on the board last night, and... I think we went 5 to 6 or 6 to 7. One or the other. 5 to 6, 6 to 7. We'll catch that night. We'll hopefully uh, the streak can, can continue. I got some plays for you. I'm going to keep this short. A little shadow point for you opening up the program. Still digging, pulling out a lot of my old music from the bands I used to go watch live when I was in high school. I still remember the days it was. As it, as if it was yesterday. Remember asking my mom for the old Buick, my old Buick Regal. Big mom, going down to a concert today. We're heading down to see Metallica. She's like, "Don't, don't be driving, don't be driving to Hamilton with the Buick." I'm like, nah, nah, don't worry, mom, don't worry, mom. We just need to get to the Oshawa Go Station. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, I'm in the cops' call, seeing parking lot. Sitting outside the beer grill, cooler in hand, cigarettes flying, waiting in line for a few hours. That's where I met these guys, like I said yesterday, met Shadow Point in line. Fucking hardcore guys. They weren't even going to the concert, like I said. They were just there to party. Party beforehand, distribute some of their CDs. It's a good time, it's a good time. Did that many times. Yeah, I need the car. Just need to get the Oshawa Go Station. Next thing you know, I'm like two hours away from home, an hour and a half away from home. It's just what I did. It's what I did. So the Monday night last night. Fuck for your Bills fan. Fuck. Because of the Bills soil. Because of the Bills ineptness. Fuck. I became a Tennessee Titans fan.
basically, I became a Titan, Tennessee Titans fan because the miracle of Music City. I was fucking just happened to be watching that game. I was young. Bam. Just everything just seemed to fucking click. One after fucking another. Eddie George, Air McNair. I remember growing up. I remember I was young. I remember being young. My dad had a whole bunch of people over. For one of the Bale Super Bowl games, actually. Didn't really understand what it meant. But I remember they were all watching. I do remember the ending, though. I do remember the ending. And there was always just disappointment. Complete fucking disappointment from Bills fans. Anger. Sorrow. Hatred. But yet, they get on the bicycle, and they do it all over again. Every week. But the Patriots didn't even have to steal their fucking playbook. They didn't have to film them. They didn't have to do nothing. Run, run, pass. Run, run, pass. Run, run, pass. That's all the Bills did. Like, I could have fucking figured it out. And they ain't no NFL coach. Run, run, pass. Run, run, pass. Fumbling off uh, punt returns. Letting the quarterback play with one arm, basically, in a two-minute drill. Like, fuck, you got a two-minute drill to tie the fucking game. Your quarterback's out there with one fucking arm. Not only are the uh, Bills players inept sometimes, but the coaching staff has always been inept. Always been inept. I feel bad for you fucking Bills fans out there. So one thing to deal with fucking bad players. One thing to deal with bad fucking shitty players. Selfish shitty players. The Rob Johnsons of the world. It's one thing to deal with fucking them. But the consistent ineptness from the coaching staff. From not just one coaching staff, but many. Fuck, man. You make Bill Belichick's life pretty fucking damn easy. Same with McCown. You made his life pretty fucking damn easy. And you know what Brady's going to do. If you get pressure on Brady, he's going to check it down. Pressure on Brady, check it down. Once Brady gets a chance to fucking read those plays, go through his options, and let it fly, he does. He lets it fucking fly. Now, I didn't mind it as a fantasy uh, standpoint. I needed Gronk to have a uh, pretty shitty fucking day, and he did. I had like a 28-point lead, you know, going in. But you never know a fucking Gronk. Five, six receptions, 100-plus yards, couple TDs. Your fucking 28-point lead fucking disappears pretty fuck quick. Just gonna play a couple more tunes here while I uh, while I can, cause I'm in the uh, I, I I'm just in that mood, just in that mood. Once again, these are all you know, friends bands, local bands that I went seen live. Continue that trend for the next couple shows. Well, let's get on to my sports picks, so everybody can move on with the day. Just like I gotta move on with my day. I got work to do. Got work to do. Sorry about the lighting shit too, right? Try to use as much natural light as possible. Got a little bit of Champions League action going on as well. Got no wagers. No wagers on the Champions League action today. I was busy doing some reporter work. I just fucking hate the darkness. Hate the darkness, you know? Because, you know, I want you to see these eyeballs of mine. I want you to see these eyeballs. Chelsea's up 3 0 over Maccabi Tel Aviv. We're taking a vacation in Israel. Big game against the Hotspur on the weekend, Chelsea. They lost John Terry to injury. He actually went off about 15 minutes ago. So it's a big fucking blow to the Chelsea back four. Arsenal is also up. Up on Dinamo. Dinamo. Croatian squad. They actually suffered a defeat in Dinamo. In Dinamo. What, a few uh, Champions League match days ago? What was that Champions League match day three? Two? Win them in three because you got to play back to back. So two, match day two. Pretty sure they lost to them. 
This is so fucking typical Arsenal. Typical Arsenal. Leon Gent, 1-1. One, one. No. To be honest with you, the best match of the day was Barcelona and Roma. Don't got that up right now. I'm trying to watch that later in its entirety. So I'm just trying to stay away from it. Well, let's get some some sports picks on the board right now, and then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll move on with our day. So as you know, I'm a big NCAA basketball fan. I can tell you when college basketball season's uh, in full swing. It's my uh, first place I check on the board. First place I check on the board. Like usual, it's a fucking cornucopia of games. It's a fucking avalanche of games, usually. A couple uh, kind of caught my eye. Let's just roll through them very quickly. Marquette. Marquette. How you doing, buddy? I met a good good friend when I was backpacking. He's uh, from Mexico, but he was going to school in Marquette. Fucking good guy. Good guy. Told me that Cinco de Mayo means fucking jack shit to the Mexicans, basically. Their fucking big Independence Day is 16th of September or 16th of October. Something like that. I don't know why 16 seems to stand in my mind. Something like that. But, uh, Marquette. They're on the road against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Now, most of these college teams are playing back-to-back, -back, Monday, Tuesdays. As is the case here. Arizona State, three and a half point favorites. Over under in this game is 149 and a half. Marquette defeated LSU last night. Or Arizona State defeated North Carolina State last night. So Marquette's going to travel. This is Marquette's first road game of the year. First road game of the year. Remember, these are students. These are students, right? They're not pros. So the first road game of the year. Going down to Arizona State. Going down to Arizona. It's going to be a tough match for Marquette. 149 and a half is the, is the total. I would kind of lean, lean to the over. I was leaning to the over. But I'll take uh, Arizona State at minus three and a half. And to be perfectly honest with you, in fact, I also got the over 149 and a half confirmed and booked as well. So like Arizona State minus three and a half over Marquette and I like the total to go over 149 and a half. Both teams, you know, putting up about 80 points a game. They got a soft defense. The Big East is usually overrated. And speaking of North Carolina State Wolfpack, the Wolfpack are hosting the LSU Tigers. North Carolina State minus one point favorites. Basically a pick 'em. Basically a pick 'em. Over under in this game is one fifty one and a half. And like I just stated before, both of these teams were in action last night. Both are on the road. Both are on the road. So I'll take the home team. I'll take North Carolina State at minus one. I think they're going to be able to put some points up on the board. I don't think LSU's offense is going to be able to hang with the Wolfpack's offense. It's a, you know, a big test for the LSU Tigers. This is a big test. Marquette in the Big East is one thing, but North Carolina State, the ACC, is a whole different monster. So I'll take North Carolina State minus one over the LSU Tigers. I could probably say my best bet of the best bet of the college board tonight is Valparaiso on the road against the Oregon State Beavers. A little fucking Oregon State Beaver action. So Oregon State, they're minus one favorites. Over under in this game is 134. 
Valpo and Mac team traveling to the West Coast. I love betting on that. I love the West Coast. Hang on a sec. Just got some tunes rolling. A little Adrian below. Turn that off. Let me just pull up, pull up some stats here. So Oregon State putting up 70 point, 78 points a game, basically 79, 63 points a game on defense. They put up 93 on Iona, another max team. Actually, I don't think Valpo. Apple's not Max, sorry. It's like Missouri Valley or something. There's so many fucking college fucking divisions. But Oregon State's been on the road for the last two matches. They get back home for this game. They beat Rice. They beat Santa Barbara. Valpo's been up in Oregon. They lost to uh, the Ducks. They lost to the Ducks on Sunday, so I, I'm assuming that they're just going to stay up there, chill up there. But still a long time being away from home. Remember, these are kids, the students. So I'll take the West Coast team hosting the East Coast team. I'll take the Oregon State Beavers at minus one. Continue the hardcore action, but we'll move to the professionals. One game really just caught my eye. A couple other games caught my eye, but I, I wasn't confident. And scared money never wins. Scared money never wins. So the Boston Celtics are on the road in Atlanta facing the Hawks. The Hawks are two and a half point favorites. The over under in this game is 204 and a half. I like the under 204 and a half. The under is cash in five of Boston's last six road games. The, the under is also cashed in six of Boston's last eight road games when they're playing in Atlanta. The under is also cashed in, Atlanta, in uh, four of Atlanta's last six games as well. And the total has gone under in eight of Atlanta's last 12 games at home. So I like the under. I like these trends that continue. Two or four and a half is a little bit too much for these two squads. Boston was in Brooklyn on Sunday, so they continue their road trip. Atlanta took a loss to Cleveland on Saturday, so they're looking to rebound. Atlanta, Atlanta relies a lot on the three ball. So when the three ball is not working, you can look at the under. So I like the under 204 in the Boston Celtics Atlanta Hawks game. Let's take a look at the Frozen Pond. Not a whole lot of games tonight. Two games tonight on the Frozen Pond. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two favorites. I'm going to parlay them up. The Dallas Stars are at home against the Ottawa Senators. Dallas Stars are minus 175 favorites over under 5.5 pucks. Ottawa's 1-6 straight up in the last 7 on the road against Dallas. Dallas is 6-1 straight up in the last 7 home games. So I like these trends to continue. I like these trends to continue. Ottawa's coming off back-to-back -back shutouts. That's not going to continue. I can tell you that much. Ottawa will not shut out the Dallas Stars three games in a row. So I like the Dallas Stars to put some goals in the net. So I'll take the Dallas Stars at minus 175. And I'm going to parlay them up with the Anaheim Ducks. They're hosting the Calgary Flames. The Ducks are minus 150 favorites, over under 5 pucks. I like the Ducks. So I'll take the uh, Dallas Stars, minus 175, parlay them up with the Anaheim Ducks at minus 150. It's like a plus 160 parlay. I'll take my shot with the home teams. I'll take my shot with the home teams. Calgary's 0-5 in the last 5 games on the road against Anaheim. Calgary is also 3 and 13 straight up in the last 16 on the road. So uh, Anaheim's won the last two games. I look for them to uh, spin three on the trot. So like I said, I'll take the Dallas Stars and pile them up with the Anaheim Ducks.
I'll just recap those picks here for you. I'll recap those picks. Got a little bit of music information, a little music news to end the segment. So, let's just rip through these picks again. NC State Wolfpack are hosting the LSU Tigers. NC State's minus one favorites over under 151 and a half. I'll take the NC State Wolfpack at minus one. Marquette Golden Eagles. They're on the road against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Arizona State's three and a half point favorites. Over under is 149 and a half. I will take Arizona State at minus three and a half, and I will also ride the over at 149 and a half. I think this will be my best bet of the night. The Oregon State Beavers are hosting Valparaiso. Valpo. Oregon State's minus one point favorites. Over under is 134. I'll take the Oregon State Beavers at minus one. In the, prof in the professional league on the hard court, the Boston Celtics are on the road in Atlanta. The Hawks are minus two and a half point favorites. Over under is 204 and a half. I'll take the under 204 and a half. And as I just stated, I'll take the Dallas Stars at minus 175 over the Ottawa Senators. And I'll parlay them up with the Anaheim Ducks at minus 150 over the Calgary Flames. Now, I'm a huge Tool fan, massive Tool fan. And uh, Tool basically just announced uh, a new U.S. tour. I'm going to get on there. Get some details, find out when tickets are for sale, find out if they're coming to Toronto, if it's just in the States. Hopefully they're coming to the Buffalo, Rochester area, and I'll get down there. Hell, I'll even go down to New York. I've seen them like eight times live. Go to band. If you want to see a fucking band live, it's just going to fucking mess with your mind, fucking take you away from shit. It's deep stuff, man. It's deep stuff, Tool. Check them out. Check them out. But uh, basically, you know. With the announcement of a new concert, it raises questions about the new album. Been waiting 10 years for a new album. But, you know, Adam Jones is describing the writing and the new album, the process of it, as wonderful. We got about 20 potential songs in a concert, actually, on Halloween of this year. And uh, Tempe, Arizona, they like to play in Arizona a lot, too. They love to play in Arizona. Tempe, Arizona, I might move down to Arizona because of that. They actually had debuted a four-minute instrumental that potentially is, could be part of the new album. Potentially part of a 13 to 14-minute new song. According to Adam Jones, Adam Jones confirmed all this, the guitar player for Tool. He says it's amaz amazing, amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. Everybody check out the new concert. Look, Keep an eye out for details. I'll definitely be at some concerts around uh, Toronto, New York area, Buffalo area. Maybe even Montreal if they got down to Montreal. I didn't know whether I should end the segment with the, with the four minute instrumental. Or if I should just kick right into some tool. But I basically made my mind up. And remember, if you're not laying the money down on the table, you're not winning.